Hi everyone, Nathan Stein, PIX4D. Today I want to show you how we can use a DJI Mavic 3 Multispectral to map this field of romaine lettuce here behind us and then go ahead and process that in PIX4D fields. It's an easy step-by-step -step guide here that will walk through how to set up the vehicle and then how to transfer that data to PIX4D fields on a computer here and then we'll process that data right here at the field's edge. We have our aircraft deployed here and I've already booted it up and started the power as well as on my remote. And we are going to go ahead and set up our mission for the Mavic 3 Multispectral. I wanna go over the vehicle really quick just to kind of give a quick overview. You'll notice there's a 20 megapixel RGB sensor here, which is a really nice camera for use uh, when we're mapping an RGB mission for maybe weeds, small plants or other things like that. Um, there's also the multispectral sensors at the top. These are five megapixel sensors which is a vast improvement on the two megapixel sensors they had in the previous Phantom series. So you'll be able to see a higher resolution multispectral image uh, that you can use for analysis. This is particularly helpful for smaller plants like this. The other feature you wanna notice is the RTK on top, which is an optional add-on you can get and will help if you're trying to create maybe even drainage and grading plans as much as just making sure that where your, your data is accurately uh, placed. The other item on the back that should be noted is the sun sensor that's facing upwards. This is measuring the sunlight coming from above, while these cameras up here are measuring the sunlight reflected from below. When you're calibrating, you're going to want to be careful not to cover this sensor up because this is uh, something that you're going to need. Now, for those that don't calibrate, don't worry about it, but I'll go over this in a minute. Another feature that's really nice to see here is the remote and the integrated screen. Now the flight planning is all built into the screen. There's no other thing that you need to have out in the field and you can get up and set up in really short period of time. So on this, I'm gonna go ahead and show you next how to um, set up and plan your mission. To do the flight planning, it's actually pretty easy with this new remote. We just simply um, start by clicking the flight route and then we're gonna go ahead and there's two options. We can generate a manual flight route or we can go ahead and we can import a KMZ file. On here, I'm gonna go ahead and click create a flight route. And then we're gonna choose mapping. Mapping is on here. That's the one you're gonna to use to create a map of this field. Now I see my location on my aircraft and my remote on the screen here, which is very helpful. I see the, the satellite imagery in the background. However, satellite imagery is typically dated and in this field and in these particular types of fields, they change quite often and so, you may not be able to draw exactly where it's supposed to be, but if you had a KMZ or a KML file uh, from, from one of your fields or in some of your records, it's a lot easier to bring in here, especially if you're pulling it from PIX4D fields. So I'm gonna click and then start. It's gonna set up a, a boundary and I'm gonna go ahead and adjust this boundary to where I know this field ends, the edges are. And you have to maybe sometimes use two fingers to zoom in uh, to do this. And then once it's done and you get it roughly close, again, you don't have to be exact on the edges of the field, but you need to be fairly close to where you want to map, okay? We're going to go ahead and select the camera. You select the camera there on the, on the, underneath that mission, and you're going to select DJI Mavic 3M. Two options are presented there, wide and wide plus NB. The wide plus NB is the one with the multispectral imagers turned on. The wide is just the RGB camera. So if you just want to fly an RGB data set and maybe do an elevation map or do a weed map or some sort of uh, plant analysis and you just want to do that, just set it to wide. If you want to do a data set that involves uh, multispectral sensing, variable rate application, some sort of health diagnosis or some other tools that you want to use or analysis, I would then use the multispectral. So use wide plus NB. I'm going to select wide plus NB. Now I'm going to use, you can use the train follow. Now in a flat area like this, it doesn't matter, but as you can see in the mountainous regions behind me, if I was mapping back there, I would want to use the train following. That would make sure that the aircraft follows the terrain at the same height. And that means that we get the same size of pixel that we can use for analysis. That's the best way to map uh, those environments. I'm going to set the height. Right here we have restricted airspace, so I'm going to go ahead and set it at 245 feet. Um, that keeps us well underneath our 250. 
And then we can go ahead and set up takeoff speed and other variables, which don't matter uh, as much. I think the defaults are just fine. You can adjust your course value. You would want to, in the past, with the Phantoms, you would want that to be automatically suggested. But now, since they've improved their sunlight sensor here on top, the irradiance sensor, you no longer have to adjust your flight parameters based on the sunlight. So you can go ahead and set your course angle with the longest rounds possible. That's going to be your best option. And then there are some other options we can use, such as the advanced settings, and I'd go there. Your advanced settings are your front overlap and your side overlap. Depending on what your application is really determines what you should set and what you can get away with. In flatter areas with low vegetation, you can have lower uh, side lap and less frequent images. In areas with taller crops, such as palm trees, corn, or any sort of orchards, you may want to increase that overlap to 80%. So 80%, 80% would be a good setting for an orchard. If I'm doing a flat crop area like this, you could do 6580 or even 5580 possibly. Some people even push it down to 40s, but I would say for good quality data, 65 to 70 is a good setting. So I'm gonna set mine to 70 for this data set and 80% for my frontal overlap. You can also change your margin. The margin is a great setting that they've added. It allows us to fly over the edges of the field a little bit more so that you get better data and then the flight lines come out a little bit further. So when you do set that, you are flying over those boundaries a little bit further. That's why I said you didn't have to be exactly specific about where you're flying. With that setting increased, I normally set it at about 100. That'll give us a little bit better look at the field and a little bit more area than, we, than maybe we need. Then there's also two settings at the bottom, timed interval shot as well as distance interval shot. Um, I would just leave it at the timed interval at two seconds, or you could do the distance interval. Um, it doesn't really matter. For this, I'm gonna go ahead and set it at distance interval, and then I can go back to my settings. The last thing you need to do is set the name for your map, or you could have set that earlier if you wanted. I'm just gonna name this one demo, for example. And then you would click the uh, the save button on the floppy disk on the left hand side there that saves your mission in here and then you can use this for future ma mapping missions and this is how we set up our mission here now we'll go on to calibrating the drone and then flying the drone here's two examples of produced uh, calibration targets that are on the market or have been on the market for some time and they're approved of for use with this sensor if you want to know which ones are able to be used for um, calibrating your imagery, please go to our support website and you'll find that in our links. And then you can use that with PIX4D fields to calibrate your data set. Calibration just ensures that the colors that are being represented in the pictures are exactly the colors um, from time to time, day to day, week to week. Uh, colors change as the sun sets and changes or the sun angles happen and so that's why we want to make sure that we have the best calibration possible and using a reference tile is oftentimes the best way to calibrate your data. So we have our drone set up here. I've got a calibration tile set out here facing north and it's on a flat surface where I can get a good sample of sunlight. Um, the part that we're taking a picture of is that gray reference material in there and so we want to make sure that's clean and doesn't have any dust on it and it's in good shape, always uh, protected and covered. That's why they make those covers. I've loaded my mission here and what I'm going to do is click in the lower left hand corner to get the image that the drone is seeing um, so I can see what the video feed is showing. And I want to set my camera to take a picture. So on the right hand side, you can select whether it's a video or whether it's a picture. I'm making sure that it's on photo and single. There's also, uh, you can set the, the, the desired uh, focus level on it. And there's a mountain and a, and a little flower. You want to click on that flower because we're really close up to it and we're trying to get a good picture. And to rotate that camera down, you have to make it look down. You don't want to hold your drone looking straight down because you want to have a flat uh, reading on your sunlight sensor. So we're going to rotate this camera down. You can see it go down right there. And now I'm, gonna, I'm ready to take my picture. I'm going to hold on to the drone here on the belly. 
and we're going to we're going to orient right over the top of this panel you can see it in your picture here and then i can just click with my finger one picture and maybe i'll take two pictures to make sure that i get a good one again we don't want to cover up this light sensor at all my sun is right here you can see my shadows reflected right here behind me i'm not casting a shadow on this sensor or on this panel and I'm not reflecting bright colors onto that panel. So I get a very, very good sample of sunlight that I can use for calibrating this data set. Okay, everything's ready now. All we need to do is hit the play button to start our mission. We're gonna go through some checks on the screen uh, that ensure that we have the right modes of operation, the right safety uh, parameters set, and you can go ahead and check those based on uh, your regional conditions. Once this is ready, you upload your flight, and then you click Start. Moving to start point. Home point updated. Check map to confirm. Hold up. Okay, our mission is ended. Now we're gonna go ahead and land and get the images off of our camera. So we've landed the drone, I've powered it off, and I've removed the micro SD card from the back of the drone, and I've put uh, that here in my computer so I can read the files off of it. Another way you could connect it is by connecting a USB-C from the computer to the drone. You just have to have the drone powered up. Okay, we open Pix4D Fields, and now we can navigate to a new project. And once we've done that, we're gonna import folders up here at the top left, or import files, and select Captured by Drone and the folder. We're gonna import a whole folder of data. In this, you wanna to navigate to where your micro SD card is and then go to the DCIM folder. Underneath there, you're gonna see several different uh, folders. The mission that you named it will be on that folder. So I have my demo here. And then the file preceding it, typically, uh, it might have a number value is the one with the calibration images. So you wanna import that and it's gonna import those calibrated images if you took them. If not, just import that folder uh, with the mission name. What you wanna do is import your TIFF. I'm, gonna imp I'm going to process the multispectral data first. So I click continue, and that's gonna bring those images in. Once you've imported those images, you can go ahead and click fast or accurate processing. I'm gonna use fast processing. And you can change the resolution, but I'm gonna keep it at full and we don't have to bother with the advanced settings. We hit apply, and then we can go ahead and import another folder. Now that the images are all imported on the computer, we just go ahead and click start processing. So we finished processing our map and we're ready to review the results. If I wanted to process the RGB image, just the regular uh, ortho, we could go ahead and take the RGB imagery and process that separately. I'm not going to do that right now. We're just going to go ahead and look at the crop health. So to start, we want to create a boundary around this field and so that we're analyzing just the field itself. I'm going to draw a boundary or I could import them if I had one and we just click around the boundary of the field, really simply, and then hit the check mark to hit OK. We can save that as a boundary, and we can go ahead and trim 
to that boundary. So I'm going to trim that just so that I'm analyzing just that crop. Once I'm done with that, I can go ahead and uh, use that image then for analysis, such as an NDVI, NDRE, or any other index that I want to do, especially a custom index that you can do in the software. All you have to do is select the ortho that you're going to use and click index. You'll be presented with all sorts of different indices that you can calculate um, based on the bands that are available on this camera. I'm gonna just choose NDVI. If I wanted to do a custom one as well, I could do that. There's a button in there for that if you wanted to do a different formula. But I'm gonna click NDVI and click generate. This doesn't take very long and once it's done, all we need to do is we can adjust the visualization parameters on the screen, which uh, helps us focus on the crop. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change in the visualization so that I can subtract some of the ground and see what it looks like. I can also change my color scheme so I can see the crop a little bit better. Um, brighter values are higher NDVI, lower values are darker. From here, now we can go ahead and whether you want to create a scouting uh, recommendation or go out and check the field, you can export it via Pix4D Cloud and share that to a mobile device that you can walk the field and, and do your scouting operation. Or you could create a variable rate prescription right here at the field's edge without the internet and share it to your implement out here in the field to go ahead and apply that product if it's capable. Or you could go to a spray drone and do some spot spraying applications or other items. You might also use our magic tool to locate weed nests or other issues that are out there, whether it be fertility, weeds, or other issues. You could use that to locate um, insurable damage, create a PDF report, and then send that to your agent. Whatever it is that you want to do, we have an option for you within PIX4D fields. And with, together with this Mavic 3 Multispectral, it makes a great package and a great tool out here in the fields. Please make sure to go to our website at pix4d.com. You can go to our community or our support pages. If you have an issue, you can detail those there. Or if you have questions, you can ask that on our community. Be sure to ask any questions you have about the Mavic 3 Multispectral or with Pix4D fields and how you can use them in your fields. And lastly, I want you to go ahead and download your free 15-day trial for Pix4D fields. Please go to our website and click try it for free today and try it with your Mavic 3 for your fields. Thank you.